Hey, what's up everyone? This is Grady with Triple Z Resale. Today we are doing a what sold on eBay video. I'm going to show you items from only one of my stores today. We're going to ignore clothing completely. I will do clothing in a separate video. So we're just going to look at interesting antiques, vintage, and uh, collectible items that have sold in my store, Triple Z Treasures, on eBay. Um, now that summer's over, sales are picking up. I'm super happy and my main goal right now for the next two months is to try and list as many things as possible to get them up for that fourth quarter for those fourth quarter sales. I'll be running sales, I'll be running promotions, and I will be having auctions. So it should be an exciting time for me and hopefully uh, I have a very good fourth quarter. But in the meanwhile, let's show you some things that I've sold in the last 30 days on eBay. So these are basically items that sold in September and October of 2018. First up, we're going to look at a couple pieces of art because I really love selling art. This is an original oil pastel, so this is not a print or a copy. This is, a, you know, an original piece of artwork signed by the artist Fran Odom, and you can see that it's just a a very cute little bunny rabbit, um, bunny rabbit, and like a little sparrow. Uh, it has her business card on the back. Um, there's the signature, 1981. So not only is this an original work of art, but this is a vintage work of art. And um, it took about one year for this to sell, but I got my full price of $79.96, plus she paid for shipping. She left me very nice feedback already, saying I did a great job packing and that it's a lovely piece. So I'm very happy that this sold. This was a, uh, an enjoyable thing to have. I had it hanging in my dining room. So um, not only did I sell it, but I got to enjoy it while it was here. This is another piece of art that I sold. This one did not sell on eBay. This one actually I sold to someone locally off of eBay. So the nice thing about that is that there are no commissions. There's no PayPal fees and there are no eBay fees. So uh, I was able to make a little bit more money on this. This is a consignment item, so I'm selling this art for somebody else. I've had it for about a year. It's a really, really beautiful piece of art. It's a signed print by um, an artist named Obagon. Let me see, what is his full name? Um, Joven Obicon. So this was uh, a signed print. It was numbered number 249 out of 300, a limited edition. There you can see an original pencil signature. Um, and what's unusual about this is that this is not a typical piece of Obicon art. Most of his artwork features um, individual characters like the ones you see there, right? But they're generally just the characters. They might be riding a horse or they might be, you know, walking. They're generally wearing some sort of like ethnic clothing, like traditional Eastern European clothing. Um, so this artist, uh, came from a Yugoslavian family. He wasn't born in Yugoslavia or raised there, but his parents were. And so his art is very representative of Eastern European influences. And his art sells quite regularly on eBay. If you want to go look up Joven Obicon, you will notice that there is a clear track record of his art selling. So even if I hadn't sold this locally, it would have sold on eBay eventually. And this was just a really interesting piece. And it was uh, Dubrovnik City. So that is a real city. And this was based on that. And it's very cartoonish and fun. And it was also hanging in my living room. I have a blank spot on my wall right now where this was hanging. So I will miss having this in my house. But I'm very glad I sold it. I sold it for a grand total of $300. And then that included me having to pay for shipping to Houston, Texas and um, pay for the box basically. So shipping cost about $75 with the box. And then, um, so I will pay out my consignment seller. Uh, I'm gonna pay him, in this case, he's gonna make uh, 65%. And um, so if you people have art you wanna sell, I will pay you for higher priced items, I will pay you 65% of the sales price. Um, so in this case, it was the sales price minus the cost of shipping. Um, and handling so we'll be splitting that and and that's great this person bought this at an estate sale and you know they they didn't pay nearly that that much for it so this was a good sale and another piece of art gone love selling art all right let's see the next one all right this is a vintage japanese silk kimono 
I enjoy doing research about this and what I learned about kimonos is that there are many different types of kimonos and they are for different purposes from everything from like, a, you know, like a ca super casual kimono that you might just wear around your house or, you know, you might wear it to walk down to the corner market or something all the way to like really super formal kimonos that you would only wear to a wedding or a special ceremony. And so, um, this kimono is vintage and you can tell it's been worn. It actually has a decent amount of wear to the inside. Um, it's hard to see it in the pictures, but um, you could definitely tell that this item was in use. This wasn't just a kimono that was made and sold like as a tourist item and then never used. Someone, someone used this kimono for a long time. And so to me, that makes it even more special because um, for sort of the, the ephemera of it, of that like this was, this was a, an item that was used and um, and so it's made of silk. Uh, it has this very pretty pattern on it. So let me zoom in on, on that so you can see, um, you know, very decorative, very fun, very interesting pattern. It did have some damage. There's some staining to it. There's some kind of areas that are bleached out a little bit. And like in the neckline and stuff, you can see some wear marks from like sweat, you know, from like someone wearing this kimono all around. And so um, I actually sold this to my dad. He's gonna put a dowel rod like right along this part of it. He's gonna put a dowel rod and hang it up on his wall. So this is gonna now become a piece of decorative home decor art. Uh, I gave him pretty much an 80% discount and sold this for $60. But that's what you do for your family. You, you know, you hook them up. So my price of 285 on eBay was kind of speculative um, because if you look up vintage kimonos, they sell for anywhere between like 40 and like $800, right? There's this huge, huge range. So I picked a high price. I had best offer on it. Um, and over time, I probably would have gotten an offer and I probably would have taken the offer as long as it was like, you know, above, uh, I don't know, above like 60 or $80. I probably would have taken an offer on this just because um, otherwise it may sit around in my store for years. I paid $12 and 50 cents for this at an estate sale. So I, I am happy to sell it for $60 and give my dad a good deal. And hopefully this was a win-win. So I sold an antique book. This book is from 1900 um, and it's Rubiat of Omar. Uh, this is a, a very, very famous book of Persian poetry. Um, and this book sells regularly on eBay. The higher end of, the, of this item, some of these sell for around $800 to $1,000 versions of this book. Um, I, paid, I paid $50 for this at a thrift store. Um, I kind of fell in love with it just because I'm a nerd for antique stuff. And I just thought it was really beautiful. Like it has these illustrations in it. And... Um, just the way the let me see if I can show you like here's a page of the poetry um, I don't know I can't explain why I like this book so much I just wanted it I turned into a collector at that thrift store where I was like I have to have this and the reason I'm telling you this is because I paid more for it than I should have um, on the research I did before I bought it I thought it was worth more and then when I realized later on when I was listing it how many of this book there are for sale and and I just realized that I'm probably not gonna make a lot of money on this sale. And that probably, um, because my business paid for it, like my money's separate. And so I can't really buy stuff for $50 and then just keep it and have my business pay for it. So I really did need to sell this and cycle that money back through my business. So I took a best offer on this beautiful book of $50. So I sold it for the same exact thing that I paid for it. And so in that case, after fees and everything, I'm actually losing a tiny bit of money on this. Um, but that's okay. This was one of those things that I just, I just bought it because I thought it was beautiful and old and antique and really interesting. And, you know, this is poetry from Persia, which technically is a country that doesn't exist anymore. This would basically be Iran today. Um, and so if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I, uh, I have a fond uh, appreciation for uh, cultural ethnic items, especially if they're antique. And, um, and this book just, I don't know, I just liked it. I loved it. And I'm really happy to sell it because uh, if you've watched my videos, you know that uh, for me, the art of selling um, is really enjoyable. And so even though I lost a tiny bit of money on the sale, I'm happy to get the money back. 
that I can reinvest into other products. And the guy was so nice. This person who bought this sent me the nicest message um, thanking me for taking his offer and saying that he knows that it's a low offer, but that his budget is very tight and that he's going to appreciate this book so much and studying it. And it was just really nice. So like I'm making someone's day. This is, you know, someone's excited to get this. This is actually going to ship out in the mail today. So um, thank you, buyer. And I'm happy you're going to enjoy this book. And I'm happy that I got to have it and look through it and, you know, have a little experience with this, with this, uh, this antique rare item. All right, this is a uh, vintage traditional style Philippine uh, Salakot hat or Tagalog hat. Um, so these are like traditional hats made in the Philippines. They've actually been so influential that uh, all kinds of other countries now make similar hats, but it, or this design originated in the Philippines. And this is a very traditional looking one. It's kind of the like triangle shaped or pyramid shaped hat. Um, and this is extremely well made. This is not like a chintzy woven item that was made to sell for cheap. Uh, the construction on it is extremely professionally done. The uh, material is very tight, very clean. Uh, it's super sturdy. Like someone could wear this hat for years out, you know, working in the field or, or in the jungle or whatever, and it would hold up to the test of time. Um, so you can see it has a tag. It does say, uh, and there it says, Ta Tapazan hat. Um, so this was really cool. I bought two of these at a thrift store. Um, I sold the other one, I think, for $120. This one I took a best offer of $80, and this will ship out today. So I really enjoyed selling these hats, and I wish I wish they had had 10 of them at that thrift store because I, I would have bought all of them. All right, this was a vintage yarn doll, um, like an African-American yarn doll. I, I always enjoy selling vintage African-American stuff just because I know that they're, they're, if you look back through American history, you know, it's been an underrepresented uh, population in like American consumer products, right? Like people had to work hard to find African-American uh, things that represented African-American culture back in the day. So when I get the chance, I'll sell figurines or dolls or whatever stuff. I featured similar items in my other videos. So um, I bought this as, as a collection with a, a uh, I don't know, maybe like 10 different dolls that I bought at a yard sale. I just said how much for the whole box and she gave me a price and I took it. So this one is crocheted. It has the, uh, it has the hat and the hat comes off. It's got this crocheted dress. Um, and you know, super lightweight, small, you can see there, it's what, about like 12 inches when it's stretched all the way out. So I was able to send this first class mail um, and it sold for $17.95. So hopefully it's going in a collection or you know, going to some little kid who will appreciate this. All right, this is a uh, 1976 bicentennial belt buckle by um, Lewis Buckles. And I bought this along with another belt. So I sold, it, it was on a belt, like a Native American style, you know, like a uh, tooled leather belt. And so I sold the belt separately and I sold this and both the belt and the belt buckle have sold like within a month of me listing it. So I just thought this was a neat item. I don't sell a lot of belt buckles. I'm very picky about what belt buckles I sell. Um, but there's the, uh, so if you wanna see the, the logo, there's the Lewis Buckles of Chicago logo. And you can see there's the size of it. So this sold for $14.95 with free shipping. Not a super high priced item, but again, it sold quickly and it was not a big hassle to photograph and list. This is a uh, figurine, um, large figurine sculpture by Daniel Montfort. Uh, he did um, a whole series of, you know, sort of Americana Western style sculptures. Um, and his items are collectible. So I bought two of these at a thrift store at 50% off. Um, I think I paid $12 for it in the end. Um, and this one is titled Scout. So let's see if I can show you the tag. It says, this is an original Montfort, this is a Montfort original Western sculpture made in Boulder, Colorado. And there you can see the signature carved into it, Montfort 1966. So the original sculpture came from 1966 and you can see there it says Scout. So that's the name of this piece. Um, and uh, this was interesting to me. I always enjoy selling Native American items. This is not a Native American item. Like it's not made by a Native American artist, um, but it 
does sort of show the intersection of Native American and American culture in you know the 1800s so this is an example of a native american who was hired by you know the u.s army to be a scout he may have even been a scout who was helping them to fight other native americans um and so he's in his traditional you know he's got traditional moccasins and loincloth and like it looks like a you know like a traditional knife on his waist there um, but at the same time he's wearing a u.s infantry jacket and he's wearing a U.S. infantry hat, and he's, you know, carrying some kind of, like, uh, carbine, you know, like, uh, lever-action rifle. So I just like the intersection of cultures in this, and, you know, there were scouts who were hired by the Army, and who, you know, that's, that's, what, they, that's what they did. So um, I just thought this was a neat piece, and I enjoyed selling it. It probably took about four months for it to sell, which is pretty good for this kind of collectible. I paid, I believe, $12 for it, and um, I think I took a best offer of 60 on this. So, you know, he got a good deal, and I, I still made money on it. Uh, he paid for shipping, and I have one more to go. So hopefully the next one will sell uh, before Christmas. All right, this was a cool false graph village pattern dinner plate. Um, I backed off of selling china. I'm not buying nearly as much china as I was, simply because it takes up a lot of room. It's very hard to pack. It takes a long time to pack it. Shipping tends to be expensive and it tends to sell slowly. That said, I liked selling China. I'm just backing off from it for you know practical logistical reasons. However, I was at a yard sale a couple weeks ago and I found this one and um, it, you know they had a whole set of false graph and this I only bought two things of the false graph and this was one of them because I said you know what someone's gonna want this plate. This is a highly collectible plate because it says you are special today. And I paid two dollars for it, and sure enough, it sold for eighteen ninety five within two weeks of listing it. And they also paid for shipping. Here's another vintage plate. This is a a vintage Austrian uh, ceramic plate. It has the most amazing uh, hand painted uh, floral design on it. Plus, it's got this white crackle glaze in the background. I just absolutely loved this piece of pottery. So let's see. The, let me see if I can show you the detail. I mean, look at the detail on this. Can you imagine this being hand painted and then fired and still having this level of detail? Um, I just think it's really well done. This, um, let me show you the signature. So this place, right, the Gamundin, uh, the Gamundin pottery has been, they've been making this pottery since the 1600s in this style. Like, even though this is not, an antique piece this was made like in the 1900s sometime but this style of pottery has existed at this same pottery for um, a very very long time so here we go uh, Gmunden pottery has a very long tradition with the first historical mention in 1492 they have a long tradition of green themed ceramic pieces that are always hand painted with the design aesthetic that goes back 600 years so um, for someone like me who's into into pottery a lot and into historical items, I just thought this was great. Um, I think originally I was trying to get like $150 for it, but I've had this for more than a year. And so, you know, over time I keep lowering the price. It's a big item to store. And I believe I took a best offer of $50 with free shipping. So in the end, I probably only made about $20 profit on this. I think I paid five or $10 for it. Um, but that's okay. This is one of those items that I was passionate about selling. So even though I didn't make a huge profit, I still made money and I really enjoyed having it. All right, here is a uh, very old vintage or antique um, apron from the 1930s. Uh, it has this cool floral design with like hanging flower baskets and you know a little bit of vine growing down off of it. Uh, it was in very good condition and it has these pockets i thought this was really cool that the um that the basket of the flower is actually a pocket and when it's laying flat you totally can't tell there's a pocket there i took the picture with my hand in it just to sort of demonstrate how that works and you know the tie uh was in very good condition i think there's a little bit of staining on it so you can see there a little bit of yellow staining but overall for its age from the 1930s very cool very good sold for $19.95 uh, plus the buyer paid for shipping. All right, this was a cleaver knife that I sold. Um, this was a consignment item for one of my consignment sellers and so he's gonna get 50% of the uh, sales price of 
This is an Ed Wustoff Trident uh, cleaver knife. I think it was made in Germany. Let me see if I can get a picture. Let me see if I can show you. So there's the markings there. Yeah, it was made in Germany. So this item is collectible in the sense of, um, in the sense of, uh, it's a very useful item. It's a very good quality chef's knife. So I don't think someone's going to like hang this on their wall or keep it in a collection, but it's collectible because they're going to use it. And someone was probably looking specifically for this brand and for this type of cleaver knife. And they finally found it. I think this took about eight months to sell in my store. So this was just a fun little cheap item that I sold for $14.95 plus free shipping. These are um, like vintage, maybe 1970s or 1980s ASU cups. So um, these are from, you know, Arizona State University where their mascot is the Sun Devil, the Sun Devils. Um, I'm from Tucson. We have a rivalry going. Our Arizona Wildcats and the Sun Devils, you know, we are, we are enemies and we meet once a year to have a massive football game and people really get into it. Um, so part of why I'm including this in the video is that this item sold, uh, this item sold right away within two days and it sold to a prop house in California. So I'm hoping someday I'm on Netflix watching some TV show that's like, you know, some TV show that takes place in the 80s or 70s and suddenly I notice one of these cups because I suspect that this cup, these cups are going to be used in some type of production. So I thought that was cool to sell something that will end up, uh, you know, in, in a TV show or a movie. All right, we're gonna end this video showing off a couple of fossils. I guess if you wanna get technical, these are like for sure the oldest items that I am selling in this video because uh, these Orthoceras and Ammonite fossils are, um, I believe, how old are they? 400 million years old. Okay, so when's the last time you sold something 400 million years old on eBay? It's probably been a minute if you've done that at all. So um, the cool thing about these bookends is that they are carved from matching pieces. So you see there when like when you line them up, they are from the same piece of stone. So the, the matrix is identical. And then it has these larger fossils, these um, ammonite fossils that are on the outside have been added. They've been glued on. Okay, so they're not part of the original stone, these two things, but the rest of the background is all um, the same piece. And so there you can see the backside of it. And I just love this type of stuff because it's from Morocco and you get this beautiful, beautiful black matrix with these really, really clear uh, ammonite and orthoceras fossils in it. And then you can see there, there's like a pocket of like quartz crystallization. So to me, these are just really beautiful. I'm really enjoying selling these, even though these fossils tend to sell kind of slow. So the round ones are the uh, ammonite fossils. And then you see that sort of long piece up there. That's the orthoceras. So both different kinds of shelled creatures. And um, this sold for $47.95 plus shipping. All right, last item of the day. I have a bunch of these listed for sale in my store. If you think that this type of little jewelry box is really cool, go check them out. Go make me an offer. I will take offers on these. Um, so this is, again, uh, these are the Orthoceras fossils, uh, these long ones, and then the Ammonite fossils are the round ones. But you can just see that this, this stone material is just full of fossils. I mean, this ancient seabed just had so many fossils in it, and you know the, the crystallization in it is really beautiful. Um, so you can see on the side, there's like a little scratch on this one. And the, the gemstone box is made of a composite of different pieces. And then the lid is made of one piece. Um, so again, this item came from Morocco, was made in Morocco. I bought it direct from a Moroccan dealer at the Tucson International Gem and Mineral Show. And you can see this one even had a little bit of a chip, which I noted in the photos and the description. And his feedback, he left me good feedback. He said, this item is beautiful even with the chip. So thank you, buyer. I'm glad you're enjoying this jewelry box and this ancient fossil that is 400 million years old. So thank you for watching my What Sold on eBay video. I hope you enjoyed these items. I had a great time selling them and um, I've had a great time selling items for my consignment sellers. I really want to do more consignment business. If you have a collection of things to sell or you have items you want to get sold on eBay and you're not an eBay seller yourself, uh, follow the link to my website and contact me below. I am actively looking for more consignment items and every single month I am writing checks to people. I am sending people money and all they have to do is give me their stuff and then I send them a check at the end of the month. So um, thanks for watching this. If you have any comments or questions, uh, leave a comment below. 
please subscribe to my channel. I need more subscribers. And um, I love that you people are watching this and enjoying this video. I had a great time making it. And I look forward to the next one. Go out there, make some money, sell some stuff, or find some collectible items. Have a great day.